though critical for their futures, uh, acknowledge the specialness of being part of something uh, like this this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call Chloe Swarbrick. Uh, tēnā koe e te mangai, tēnā koutou e te whare, uh, kia a koutou o nā, nā, tī, nā tai ki tamaki, tēnē te mihi aroha uh, ki a koutou katoa, i tēnē rā o koutou, nāku te fifi ki te kōrero mō te ropu kākāriki. Uh, Mr Speaker, I rise uh, and would like to talk, talk over the points of the previous speaker, Todd Muller, made about how uh, special it is to have the House united uh, in moving forward with this settlement. Uh, Mr Speaker, I was born and raised in Tamaki Makoto in Auckland. Uh, I never, however, learnt about the mana whenua of Auckland. Uh, and in the circles in which I grew up, that was normal. Uh, ignorance of our land's history was indeed normal. It wasn't until I was at university that I first started to really learn about Te Tiriti o Waitangi. Uh, it wasn't until I was in the ironically privileged setting of law school uh, that I was truly able to genuinely engage with the founding living document of Aotearoa New Zealand. Uh, if I'm lucky enough to have children in the future, I don't want them to grow up in that same ignorance. We live in a colonised land, uh, and the institution in which we presently operate is a colonial institution. But, Mr Speaker, with knowledge of our history become, uh, gives us the opportunity to consciously transform our present uh, and our future. So on behalf of the Green Party, I want to acknowledge the ongoing mahi and sacrifice to get to this point of Nga Tai Ki Tamaki and gathering their histories uh, and sharing their whakapapa and their lived experiences of alienation. Having been lucky enough uh, and privileged indeed uh, to sub out for our new co-leader Marama Davidson at the hearing uh, on this bill at, uh, in Tamaki Makoto at the Jet Park Hotel, uh, I want to acknowledge the trauma and hurt that's been brought up throughout this process and associated indeed to its delay. I want to acknowledge the simultaneous sense of liberation felt by some in the journey uh, of their discovery of their whakapapa, their kuia, their komatua and their rangatahi. I want to acknowledge those who've worked to achieve this settlement and those who've, pa who've passed before it's been brought to this point in its fruition. Uh, Mr Speaker, this bill contains powerful stories of our collective history. It's an archive. It's an insight into the history of Tamaki Makoto, of where I grew up and what I grew up not knowing. This represents a critical step in fixing the history books. And if we commit to continuing the work and remedying the evident hole in our education system, that signals a cultural change, predominantly, I note, for Pakia. It signals the beginning of a genuine Te Tiriti relationship an upholding of the founding document of our country and the relationship and power sharing that that document is predicated on. As outlined in this bill, Natai Ki Tamaki maintained customary interests in Ahika, in Tamaki, Huaraki, and the Hauraki Gulf since time immemorial. Natai Tamaki, uh, Natai Ki Tamaki, consider that their tupuna uh, did not intend to permanently alienate their ancestral lands through transactions in the late 1830s. Those transactions were attempts by the tupuna to foster ongoing, mutually beneficial relationships with the Europeans. In 1837, during negotiations for a large block of land in Tamaki, a missionary documented in writing that Iwi and Hapu, who had sold their land, would retain at least one-third of the block for their personal use forever. In 1842, a land claims commissioner backed this up with recommendations that the Crown leave <laughs> one-third of the missionary purchase to the undisturbed possession of Māori. Despite this, the Crown did not properly assess the adequacy of the land left to Ngātai Kitamaki meaning they ended up with a fraction of the original block and substantially less than the one-third that was promised. So too, the hugely significant Natai Kitamaki interest in Mototapu ended up alienated. At Karaka Bay on March 4th, 
1840, Tunatai Rangatira signed Te Tiriti o Waitangi. Yet still, after the treaty's signing, tens of thousands of acres of more land was confiscated, sold and alienated. All of this, Mr Speaker, is why Section 9's Crown acknowledgements are so critical. The Crown acknowledges that it has failed to deal with long-standing grievances of Natai Kitamaki in an appropriate way, and that recognition of these grievances is long overdue. The Crown acknowledges that Natai Kitamaki sought to establish mutually beneficial relationships with the Europeans and the Crown by participating in these land transactions, and that those transactions contributed to the development of Auckland and Aotearoa New Zealand as a whole. The Crown acknowledges that its historical military activity and occupation north of Mangatafiri led to death and dislocation with the rohi of Natai Kitamaki. The Crown acknowledges that by 1880, Natai Kitamaki were virtually left landless, and the Crown's failure to ensure that it retained sig uh, significant and sufficient land for their present and future needs was indeed a breach of Te Tiriti o Waitangi. That has impacted Natai Kitamaki's well-being and ability to exercise manaki tikanga in their rohi. Te Tiriti o Waitangi, uh, Mr Speaker, is, as we all know, however, not just about property rights, but an ongoing relationship between iwi, hapu and the Crown. The Green Party of Aotearoa New Zealand recognises the treaty settlement process for what it is, an opportunity for iwi Māori under the pressure of economic and social hardship and within the constraints of a Crown-imposed process to make the best deal possible to re-establish a small economic base for their people. The financial redress in this settlement process as a whole represents, however, under 1% of what was stolen. And policies such as large natural groupings often generate further titiriti breaches. It is an imperfect process, but it's what we've currently got. And I can guarantee that the Greens are committed to, con to keeping up the mahi to continue improving this process and improving redress. So too, our party recognises Te Tiriti as not something to be fully and finally settled. We want Te Tiriti to be fully honoured and implemented at every level of government. We also need to be careful with the enduring narrative associated to Te Tiriti processes that they enable iwi to provide social services, which are the core responsibilities of the Crown. While we uphold mana motuhake and encourage greater Māori participation in social service delivery, we cannot expect iwi to suddenly have the resources to provide for all of their people. This bill, Mr Speaker, contains an account of history. Apologies from the Crown, financial redress, an option to purchase land, the vesting of 16 sites of historical, cultural and spiritual co-management structures, and it reverts the names of sites to their indigenous Te Reo Māori names and recognises the right to renegotiate, uh, to renegotiate rather, uh, further redress. Uh, Mr Speaker, the submissions on this bill, which I was privileged to hear, spoke to heartache, to alienation from whakapapa, to treo, to culture, from a sense of belonging. So too, there was a submission uh, from Nati Wai on overlapping claims, which was addressed by previous speakers, such as the flaw and the notion of large natural groupings. This process is not perfect, but it is a step towards crucial recognition of the hurt the Crown has caused historically, of fixing the history books and undoing some of the damage. It is about rebuilding a relationship. On behalf of this, uh, on behalf of the Green Party, I commend this bill to the House and Kia Kaha. Mr. Speaker, um, I call the Honourable uh, Scott Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The uh